Now let's go back into our case study in which we of course now want to focus on the dimensions. And we've learned that the date dimension is probably the most important dimension, but luckily we can set this up very easily in our database management system using SQL code. And we can just pre-populate that without any source data. So this is done very easily using the SQL code. Of course, this course now is not supposed to be a SQL course and that's why we won't dive into all of the specifics of that code. But you can just see this as an example, as a quick demonstration of how things could work and how it can look like in practice. Of course, we are using in our case PostgreSQL as our database management system. But if you are using Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle or any other database management system, you can also find the related code to create such a date dimension very easily through a Google search. So you can also use then the code that you find. And therefore, we now want to jump in to understanding how this code works in principle. So let's jump in and see that I have already created this code. So we see we have, of course, our date key and then we have all of the related attributes. So let's see how we can set this up. And first, as I have already created this table, I want to also drop it again. So now we can start fresh and the first step of course is just to create the table. And with that we just set up the table structure. So we set up all of the column names and the constraints and data types. Constraints means for example something that the value in this column cannot be null. And of course this should be the case for example for our primary key and also our date and actually in our case all of the values we are not allowing nulls. And then of course when once we have done that for all of the columns, set up all of the data types and all of the constraints, we have this table now set up. So let's quickly run that code and with that we have set up our table. So now it should be visible if you right click on the tables and click on refresh, you will now also see this date dim table. And now if we move on, we also want to add the constraint of a primary key. So we just use the column that's supposed to be our primary key and we add the constraint. So this is the constraint name and we use the alter table to add a constraint. So this is the syntax for adding a primary key. So we always should physically set up a primary key and denote one column as our primary key. So once we do that, we have also set up our primary key. And then the next step is also to create an index on our date. So this is the date column and this is just helping also with the performance. So some queries can be executed faster and this just helps with the optimization of the query performance. So on the date column, we want to also now put this index. So once we set up this, we have that done also. But now still, if we want to query from the table, so we see that there's still no data included. And therefore, we also want to insert data in this table. And that's what we are doing using this insert into command. So if we want to do that, we see that we have now for all of the columns, so for example, for the date key, some commands that are just placing in some values and we use also a sequence for that. So this will be generated and then all of the values will be defined. So once we select that, we can also run that. And then once we have also executed that code, we can now again select that table and see if there is now data included. And indeed, now not only the table exists, but also there is some data included. And we can also see that the date key is our primary key. And this is now what we want. And now we can use and reuse this table many times. And if we scroll down, we can see that now this is going to the point 
of somewhere very late in the future. So this can help us now for the next, let's say 10 years. And therefore this table can be used and reused also in other data warehouses. So we can just put this into some database in our company and we can reuse the table very easily for different data warehouses. Of course, if we want to have some additional columns or some columns removed or some columns modified, we can also of course adjust that and then load this adjusted date table in our data warehouse. But now this can serve as one template of a date dimension that can be reused also in other data warehouses. So hope it was helpful and see you in the next lecture.